Good morning, Leah. Good morning, Allison. How are you today? You know, I'm good. We are a little bit early. Apologies to anyone who is not here yet because we're here early. We were just so excited. Just so excited. I'm just so, so excited. excited. <laughs> you know, it's our final show of the year. I, I have know. been the one insisting on introductions, so we'll go ahead and do that. I'm Allison. Okay. I'm the technical services librarian at Fairfield County. I don't have it with me right now, but um, but for purposes of introduction, the book I'm reading right now is A Gentleman in Moscow, and I'm reading it for book club. I'm only a few pages in, but it does seem absorbing, so I'm excited about that. Okay. I am Leah Kerrigan. I'm the coordinator of adult services. i currently reading... It's a Christmas romance, and okay, I don't remember the title because the title has nothing to do with the story. They all have like those, like Jingle Bells or Silver Bells yeah. or yeah. Mistletoe Madness. Like the title never has anything to do with the story when it's a Christmas right. romance. So yes. even though I'm trying, I cannot remember the title of the book. That no, I'm that's reading. totally fine. I was just trying to think of something to say to introduce myself while we had yeah. a little bit of time. <laughs> Um, speaking of Christmas titled books, um, I will go ahead and say on here recently, yes. Leah already knows this, but recently a couple weeks ago, um, we discovered that there's not one, but two books, different books entitled Amish Christmas Twins. Um, Are they both collections of multiple stories? One, one is one is only one story, but the second okay. Amish Christmas Twins is three stories all about Amish Christmas Twins. Um, whether they're born at Christmas or whether they're adult twins who are causing some Christmas mayhem, you know, I, I don't, there, I know there's one where there's a set of twins and a set of twins, male and female, I think, but regardless, it was just, we were very surprised and delighted to learn right. that there were two. I'm um, guessing March is just a very, very fertile time of year. It's the beginning of spring, more likely to have twins. I, that's what I'm guessing. I think that that sounds like the science holds up on that. Right. Do you have a, a Christmas beverage? Oh, we um, both a candy cane. <laughs> we did, yes. Um, what, what do you, I like your mug. Mine isn't really, it's as festive as I could get. What's, um, what's your drink? Um, I have hot chocolate with marshmallows that have melted, which is the way I love yeah. it. And yeah. uh, stirred with a peppermint stick that also has melted because apparently my hot chocolate is very, very hot. Oh, hot. So um, I apologize if you can hear my dog barking. I'm guessing I just got a package delivered because he's barking in the other room. So my apologies if you hear him. Uh, only a little bit. Okay. Um, I have a similar beverage. I made, except mine, okay, so mine is a spoonful of hot chocolate mix and the marshmallows that have mostly melted and the candy cane, but instead of water, it's coffee. And so I do want to say good morning, Andrea. Good morning. Um, I have mentioned that on here before because it's a little treat I make, but I did learn that from somebody at a library conference. She's not, she's not a librarian within our library, but she is in our consortium. And I was standing there in front of the, the coffee bar thing and it was like the afternoon and I was like, well, I want more coffee, but like I've also had so much coffee, it'd be great to have something else, but it still needs to have caffeine in it. I don't even know if I was talking to her. I may have just been yeah. talking to myself because who knows? And she was like, well, have you ever done like coffee hot chocolate? And I was like, what? And she said, well, yeah, you just make a, you get a cup of coffee and then you just pour the bucket of hot chocolate in it. And I was like, ma'am, you're a genius. And uh, it did change my life. Um, and it's very, very good. And it really, it really gets you there. That's for sure. Um, yeah. there's the Holly, well. Holly agrees that that is brilliant. I have to say, mm -hmm. I have done that and I truly enjoy it. I love it's that so little good. chocolate mm -hmm. in my coffee. Yes. Good morning, Melanie. Nice morning, to see you Melanie. today. Um, and while I was thinking about that, I did just want to say, because I was thinking about that as I was making that this morning. And um, I want, I know there's like so many, so many losses with this pandemic, um, mm -hmm. obviously, but one of the things that, one of the losses that I think I feel the most compounded is just the opportunity to like spontaneously interact with somebody like that, you know? Yeah, yeah of course we're not having the conference and that's its own thing, but like the opportunity to just like encounter somebody and like have like, all, all conversations are very scheduled and very mm -hmm. measured these days. Yeah. Don't want them to be more than 15 minutes if they're in person and all that kind of stuff. And so not to get too sappy, but I feel like this show is kind of one way to pull some of that 
back into our lives because even yeah. in our workplaces and I think I probably speak for other people watching this too just those I don't know there's just not much spontaneous you know, the phone calls we have at work tend to be more work related we maybe sometimes go off on a tangent <laughs> Because nope. that's who we are. Uh, yeah, we, we call and we talk about work stuff. You don't have that like random interaction with people that you you, you right. have. And I think you're right. I, I do miss that. Although and, yeah. um, sometimes I'm surprised at like, you know, people will just like assume that I work places where I do not work. Like, <laughs> I walk around with an air of authority sometimes. I know. <laughs> Like I know what's happening and what should be going on, and they'll ask me where where so such and such is kept. I'm like, I don't know. I'm just shopping, <laughs> right? You? Um, not. I don't think anyone ever thinks I work there. That happens um, to me a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I th I definitely like I'm I'm talking about talk to people in the aisle and like I help people. You know, like you know, like if someone asks where something is, sometimes I'll ask somebody where something is. Like I know it's in this aisle. Where where is this or whatever? But I don't. You do hate the grocery store. I hate the grocery store. Um, some man very timidly walked up to me and held out a bag of chocolate and said, have you considered trying ClickList? <laughs> I was like, I know that you're just promoting this in the store, but the way you're approaching me, it makes me think that I need to start using this service. Because <laughs> you look so angry and so upset, yeah. And yes, I, I have started using ClickList. I will consider <laughs> using ClickList. Yeah, I've used ClickList during the pandemic for sure. And it is, I love grocery shopping though. So I'll be happy to get back to that, but it is convenient. Hi, Carol. I want to tell you, you didn't miss anything. We've just been showing off our Christmas mugs and saying good morning. We That's didn't. as far as we've gotten today. <laughs> I didn't miss much. Um, yeah, and I guess just to, to wrap back around, it seems like we don't ever... Like you don't ever get the opportunity to even just like chat with someone in line at the grocery store because you're all six feet apart or we don't have meetings in person. So the before and after meeting thing, and I, again, not just at our work, but probably lots of people's workplaces yeah. or even passing someone in the hallway, you give them a wide berth, you know? And so one of the things about this, you know, I know when we started it, we weren't, we weren't even entirely sure what it would look like or what are we replacing one of our programs with this? Is it going to be like a program we already did all that kind of thing. And I think it's just kind of been nice. I hope other people who watch it feel this way, but it's kind of been nice just to sort of like have a casual gathering moment. Yeah. yeah it's, it's like, it feels like a chat with friends and um, not just you, but our followers. Yeah. You know, it's really nice to yeah. see names come back week after week and to yeah. talk to them. Um, I've really, really enjoyed that. So, so I'm sorry for really the beginning of this to talk about that, but I was making this drink and I was thinking like, you know, when was the last time you just like were standing in a line with somebody and had this spontaneous conversation that changed your life? Cause now you drink your coffee this way. You know? <laughs> like, and I was thinking, well, really this is <clears throat> librarians. Cause someone will mention something in the comments and you're like, I've never heard of that. And then the next thing you know, you know, you're looking it up, you're reading it, you're watching it. And I don't know. Thanks, everybody. Cash um, gav. I can, I can use it. I'm like, <laughs> cash gav. I like the that. code. <laughs> Andrea says it's a cash gav, if you will. And it is. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, Andrea. I like that. <laughs> so, oh. you want to go ahead and open the present I, I got you? I do. I, um, it's, it's, something very little I, I got i got allison a gift because um if you want to go ahead and open it okay um, i'll open it it's been sitting here already know what it is it's been sitting here in front of me this whole time and i have had it since yesterday and even though it's the type of thing where the lid can just come off i did not open it so <laughs> but look how cute that the box is though it's really cute perhaps leo will receive a gift next year in this very box actually i just dumped the tag in my coffee so maybe not <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, all right, so this side says coffee, which is a hint as to what this is, which is the Dewey Decimal number for coffee. <laughs> this is so cute! Collection nonfiction status in library availability one cup. <laughs> 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 
I love you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. We actually talked about that cup in one of our episodes earlier in the year. I was like, do you have that cup from ALA? And you were like, no. And I was like, I know what I'm getting you for Christmas. I've never heard of this cup from ALA until you mentioned it. So thank you so much. (laughs) I felt like you had to have that cup. And it also Mm -hmm. gave me an excuse to buy myself one because, you know. Yes, that's my favorite kind of gift. The one where it's like buy buy one for you and one for them. Thank you yes, so much. I, I may have done that. <laughs> I cannot. Oh, Carol wants to know if you should look. They should look on their porches. <laughs> I, I I'm sorry. I don't have your home addresses. I didn't get anyone else a gift. Just Alice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I love it. You're welcome. If I weren't going to make a gigantic mess, I would pour the drink and drink into this. <laughs> But that's not the show anyone that's, is here for. That's just, that's just asking for, <laughs> for trouble. We don't want to do that. Thank you so much. Oh, man, that's great. Mm, thank you. I'm sorry I didn't get you anything, but this is very exciting to open on air. <laughs> <laughs> You've gotten me things in the past, so no oh, worries, no worries. It was just one of those things that I was, I, I was like, I have to get that mug for Allison. Oh, so. that's so thoughtful, and I'm so happy. I cannot wait to drink out of it. Um, thank you so much. <laughs> um, or under your chairs. No, oh my God. Is not under your chairs. That would be so funny. Isn't our presence gift enough? Oh like, I God. thought we were a gift. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm really picturing, like, the literal world in which everyone who's watching this is, like, what and like reaches <laughs> under the chairs and somehow we have put a gift under there. We do not have Oprah's um, team who who does all of that work and hides presents under everyone's seat in the auditorium. No, I know. <laughs> if only. <laughs> right. A car um, for you. Everyone gets a car. I know. That's really funny. I'm going to be thinking about that for a while, actually. Um, <laughs> So this was our holiday episode, um, or is currently, continues to be our holiday episode. Um, I also thought, if, we, if we're going to get into it, I also thought it might be our most controversial episode we've ever had. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, we might lose, we might lose followers. After I know. This. this could be like a civil war situation, like where no, both know. sides are fighting and I know. cannot see the, the other side's point of view. I know. I know. And... It's a risk we're taking. It's a big risk we're taking. Do you want to? It's also like very personal and we're exposing. It's very vulnerable. It is because it's so, people are so divided on this issue. This is a really divided issue. Yeah. And we're taking a very clear stance. Also, I think that that, that's that's brave, isn't it? Isn't what we're doing today really brave? It is. Yes. Today we're talking about. And Andrew wants to know if it was more controversial than our conversation <laughs> last week in a completely different way. <laughs> right. Very controversial. Tonight, t- tonight, it's 1030 in the morning. This morning, we are talking about holiday Christmas movies. We're talking about the Hallmark Christmas movie genre and the controversial stance that we're taking <laughs> is that we like them. <laughs> I love them. I know. They all have the same storyline. But I love them. It's just they all could even have the same actors in them, really, because they all look identical. Actually, a lot of them do have the same actors. Like every year, yes, um, yes. Lacey Chabert makes one, and um, Candace Cameron Bure makes yeah. one. It's like you see the same people in them over and over and over yes. again. But yes, Hallmark Christmas movies. In so, lifetime Christmas movies, I've got to yeah, throw those in there too. That's, that that was my my when we Lee and I've talked about this many times just in our casual regular lives. Um, and um, that's what I got. I got like one of those TV subscription services just for like November and December for this month, just to so I could watch so I could watch more movies. Um, and I've been watching some of the Lifetime ones, and I've really been getting into the Lifetime ones. They're the same. I mean, they're the same thing. I'm not going to pretend they're any different. They're the same thing as the Hallmark ones, but it is a different, like, stable of actors, for one. Yeah. They have Melissa Joan Hart, and I really enjoy watching Melissa Joan Hart. Um, and I I would argue that they're maybe, like, 5 to 10% a little bit hipper. Yes. Maybe, yeah. Or, like... A little bit, I don't, for some reason, I just kind of connect with them, like just a little bit more than the Hallmark ones. Yes. But 
I'm, I'm not going to pretend that they're any different <laughs> different of when you you know are really looking at them. But um, Mary wants to know where we stand on the Christmas Prince movies. Um, I saw the first one and I enjoyed it. Yeah. I, I I I I love all Christmas movies, so even when they're slightly ridiculous, and you know, slash especially when they're slightly ridiculous. Yes, and yeah. you know, finding a prince, like, of course, why not? I love it. Yeah. I love it. I've only seen the first Christmas Prince movie, and then I saw that one um, with Vanessa Hudgens in it, not where she's the pr the Christmas switch thing, but the one where the prince comes to the present day he like time travels to present day christmas time um or he's like no he's not a prince he's a knight a knight travels to present day christmas time um and one reason why i don't watch a lot of the netflix ones i think is because like i know they're available anytime and i like mainline the lifetime and hallmark ones because like that's what's on right now and then I never get around to the Netflix ones as much, even though I'm sure that they are. Yeah. Identical. You don't feel the pressure to watch them. And then like after New Year's, you're like, mm, I'm not into it anymore. <laughs> it's like between the Thanksgiving and New Year, yeah. I'm all about the Christmas movies. Every yeah. once in a while, you know, like when, when, when Hallmark is showing one in the middle of the summer, I'll be like, oh, I'll tune in. <laughs> yes. But yeah, yeah, for the most part, it's, you know, Thanksgiving to New Year's, I'm all about the first movie. Yes, and it doesn't matter that they're all the same. That's somehow the beauty of it. Yeah, although, you know how it's always like a big city girl goes to the little town and rediscovers, like, the joy that is little town? I saw one where she was encouraged to go to the big city to live her dreams, and I was like, oh, that's a twist. Do you know the title of that one? I have not seen that one. I'm sure you don't, and it doesn't matter. It could be, all the titles are also the same. One time, one time, one of my coworkers and I were trying to nail down one that we had seen, and we were, it was so funny because we were each seeing the name of a real Hallmark movie, but none of them were the ones. And it was like, they were all inns, or there were all something about like a Christmas inn. Yes. But, <laughs> they were all real, but there were so many of them. <laughs> yes, it's, 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 it's kind of insane. Because again, the title really doesn't have a whole lot to do with the story. Mm -hmm. Except, what was it? Lights, Christmas, Hanukkah? Like, what was lights? They do a Hanukkah one, like, every year. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I, I, I watched this year's Hanukkah one. I enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I know. And the ones that are on... So, I have two that I'm going to watch this weekend that I actually missed when they were originally on. But mm -hmm. I... They're come surprise, they'll be on again. Um, the ones I think this is true for Hallmark and Lifetime, but the ones that are on at like eight o'clock on like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, those are going to be your better ones, the yeah. ones with the bigger stars and everything. And then the ones that are on at like 10 p.m. on a Tuesday are the ones that are a little bit, um, yeah, yeah. So there's one that I'm going to watch this weekend, and Fran Drescher um is the mother and she is like uh, for her son the, and i can't setup. the the, the christmas setup, setup maybe christmas setups yes yeah i, I am that so one when we are set to record that one i i am yes. looking forward to that one i enjoy fran drescher so i cannot wait and then the other one that i didn't get to see that i'm gonna watch this weekend is it which i think you'll probably everyone here will appreciate is a woman writes romance novels and she like goes away for christmas or whatever at some lodge i don't know whatever and in and um, she meets the man who she's been writing, basically the man who she's been writing in her romance novels all along. Like she meets him in person somehow. I don't know. I don't know the specifics, but I'm very excited to see that. I I've watched two, two, two ones about writers where one, um, she goes to like a writing conference and she meets this great guy, uh, which I loved. It was great. Yeah. Um, another one where a writer gets an inspiration for a small town from this man she used to work with mm -hmm. so she writes a christmas story set in this small town and with her all their holiday traditions because he's told her all about them and then um her editor sends her back to that small town and she meets that man again he's moved back there oh. and um love ensues but um, <laughs> so yes i love the writer ones um there was another one which was that i really loved this year um People got letters like, oh, you're invited to this <clears throat> inn for Christmas. Yeah. Like, 
one person thinks her her company told her, oh, we're sending you a gift, be, be, look out for it. So mm -hmm. she thinks that her company sent her, another person thinks she won a contest. Okay, whatever. yeah. Yeah. All these people realize they don't know who invited them. And it's. Oh, no. Ooh. And then there's not a twist where they all get murdered, right? It's like. <laughs> for a minute there, I was like. <laughs> But it was not. It was it was very lovey dovey. <laughs> right. That sounds great. One of the <laughs> one of the genres of we're gonna call them all Hallmark movies. I okay. I feel like that's the easiest thing because we all know what we're getting out there. One of the genres of them that I don't really care for though, the my least favorite one to watch is when there's a Christmas wedding that's happening. For some reason, I'm just not into those. I like weddings but something about mashing the two together and then like decorating for the christmas wedding i want them to decorate for a christmas party which they do in most of them but for some reason like the <laughs> it's too many things for me to be casually invested it's too stressful yeah the christmas wedding i think would just be too stressful i know the one i was watching sorry go ahead i was just going to be like oh we've got some comments but you go yes. ahead sure. well i was just i was just going to say the one i was watching last night the person said i did research this week i made notes um, for this, you know, um, the one I was watching last night, the woman said in the beginning, like to her wedding planner, because very often an event planner plays a role in these as well. Um, and she says, we knew if we didn't get married on Christmas Eve, we would regret it for the rest of our lives. <laughs> that, that, that's very heavy. And also, but why? I mean, there wasn't really any context given. It was just they had to get married on Christmas Eve. So you better make this happen, even though your child's play is happening that night. Um it all worked out, but anyway, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, Melanie mentioned that Netflix has a bunch of Christmas movies. Um, Andrea says, yeah, you either meet a man moving from big city to a small town or small town to big city. It usually goes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and Melanie's just laughing at us, well, just laughing at us because we're ridiculous and that's okay. That's fine. And the I will own it. And like the Hallmark bingo cards and, you know, the more saucier Hallmark drinking games and things, they're not wrong either. Like you watch this stuff and part of me watching it too is I just like, like checking the things off in my head. Like there's the gazebo, the classic mm -hmm. reused always in their Hallmark gazebo. The kiss at the end where it starts to snow. The snowball fight. There's yeah. always a snowball fight. Um, yeah, and I just, it's so like I. It's not that I think I'm watching, like premier entertainment. I also like watching. I like predicting what they're gonna say. I like sometimes keeping track of like how I like how soon through it am I gonna know all the different components that they piece together? Because it really is just kind of like a flow chart that they just pull different pieces and then mash it together into one story. But they all working with the same set of pieces, kind of. Um, and so like the what the other one I was watching recently, um, I was less than three minutes into it and she'd already received, she'd missed a phone call from an estate lawyer who obviously is going to be the man she falls in love with. And her assistant had already said to her, so that's why you don't have a Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only three minutes into the movie. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, Melanie says she's not laughing at us. She's giggling with delight. Um, and she likes the same silly things about them. So yes. I watched one last night with my mom and it was really cute. Um, Christmas pen pal, something about pen pals. I, I don't know what the first word was. Uh, Mistletoe pen pals. Right, something. <laughs> um, and you know, people like the woman at the post office is playing matchmaker and she's, people are writing to a secret pen pal oh and um, you know, so people are getting to know each other through these letters, old fashioned things called letters. Yes. Right. People handwrite. Right. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's like, oh, who in town is going to end up with who? And my mom's like, that person's going to end up with that one. I'm like, no, they're not. They're going to end up with that one. And like, I was right. She's like, how did you know? I'm like, I know the formula. <laughs> There is a formula, and it is a, a very well-used formula, that's for sure. And, uh, I, it like, I don't know. Couple, obviously, it was a secondary couple, but. Well, right, the primary right. couple, you obviously know. Right. Um, and I just, I love laughing at, like, 
And I like, I love the seriousness with which they take their Christmas festival, whatever Christmas festival this town has, whether it's a Christmas Eve production or a week long holiday. Oh, the other thing that you mark off on your card is when they go get the Christmas tree, because yeah. like, Sometimes I've watched one where they're not even getting a tree for their own home. It's just like wedged in there. Like someone needs a tree, so they have to go get it. Or like the town square needs one, but it's not even, somehow these, this couple has to go get a tree, even though it's not for either of them. Yes, I have seen that also. <laughs> I, love it I, I, I do too. And it's just one of those things that's just like, the town square needs a Christmas tree. Okay, I'll go with that. Like, I'm just, I will accept it. Sus it's what is willing suspension of disbelief? Yes. yes. I am all it's for fine. that. Movies. One of my, and I like the ones that are also like intentionally funny. Um, there's one, it, I think it premiered a couple years ago on Lifetime, but of course they show it each year. Um, it's Melissa Joan Hart and Barry Watson, who was in Seventh Heaven. He was the oldest brother, and he comes, he's a nutcracker who has come to life. She makes some type of a Christmas wish and this nutcracker, she, she's a cookie baker. Mm -hmm. um, she has all these Christmas orders and she's trying to sustain this business. And this nutcracker somehow comes to life overnight. And so she ends up using him to like help make all these cookies and stuff. But he, and of course, I mean, it's very unclear how much of his brain is still nutcracker brain and how much is human brain because there's some things he does, doesn't understand. And then uh, he's very wooden and everything. But, um, and like, it's just, it's so silly. It is so objectively ridiculous. And they do fall in love at the end. I don't, I don't remember how it all works out, but it does. But that's one of my favorite ones. He was a nutcracker, so he doesn't have a birth certificate. So he doesn't have any ID. So he's going to have a very complicated life. Exactly. Yes. And he like kind of behaves like an alien. Like he doesn't understand how humans do at all. Some, I think he kind of like, I think what they've given him is like the brain of like a soldier from centuries ago, like an actual, like whatever he is a nutcracker. Okay. Of, kind of. Okay. But yeah, okay. it's going to be a rough life. It's going to be rough, but I think that the magic of Christmas will prevail and they'll be okay in the end. <laughs> Everyone wants to know how old is he? Well, in nutcracker years, I don't know, but this movie came out only a couple years ago. So Barry Watson himself, I also don't know. He's ageless. I want to say they're like 40. Like we'll, we'll like okay. put 40 at the point. Like however old. I mean, Melissa Joan Hart also, they're, they seem to be about the same age. These people are timeless. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I also watched one with one of the Maori twins in it, like Tia and Tamara from Sister yeah. Sister, which might also be why Lifetime movies appeal to me. Growing up in the 90s, I'm getting to see the people I watched on television now as just adult women in these yeah. movies. Um, so... <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. They can find love. I can too. <laughs> exactly, right? Um, oh, and Kelly Rowland from um, from Destiny's Child. She's in some of them on Lifetime. Oh. <laughs> I I will I will confess I haven't seen as many of the Lifetime ones. Mm -hmm. I I watch more of the Hallmark ones. Yeah. Um, mainly because that's what my mom has gone through in DVR. So <laughs> yeah. So we watch them. You know, yeah. all season long. That's wow. totally fine. Um, can I, can I ask like other Christmas movies that you enjoy? Other Christmas movies. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> I. I mean, I love Christmas movies. Um, I, I will say, them. along in the same vein, Love Actually. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> Um, but then also as far as Christmas, I think I've got a few, like, I really like, again, this is going to show when I grew up. I think, I think your favorite Christmas movies align with like kind of generationally. And so for me, it's gotta be, it's Home Alone and the Santa Claus. Yeah. I love both of those. Santa Claus, um, the actor, um, Tim Allen. Yes. He had to stay in character even when he wasn't, even when they weren't filming because the kids are in the movie thought he was Santa Claus. So he had to like stay in character all the time. Oh, Isn't that the sweetest thing? <laughs> it is, it is. Uh, that's very, that's very nice. And that movie, I mean, again, you know, I know it's, and the thing about the Santa Claus I was actually just talking about this not that long ago. Um, the thing about the Santa Claus is it really is 
when you look at Christmas movies, the Santa Claus really is about Christmas. It's about like the Christmas mythology. Like mm -hmm. Love Actually is set at Christmas. And of course it's a Christmas movie, but it's a romance. And then yeah. like Home Alone, it's set at Christmas and it is about Christmas, but it's like this caper and you know, all that stuff. But the Santa Claus is like a Christmas mythology movie, yeah. you know? And so that makes it special and fun. Oh, oh. What is the name of it? It's one of those claymation ones, yeah. uh, like Rudolph, but it's not Rudolph. Um, with the burger, mice, the mice, the burger. Yes, yeah. Um, or they outlaw Christmas. I like that one because you know he yeah. was raised by the people and he goes off. I like that one. And the yeah, um, uh, I, Christmas Chronicles. Christmas. You'll have to tell me more, Chris. I don't remember that title. More information. Um, Elf. Mary loves Elf, which makes her cry. Um, Melanie also likes Home Alone. Mary saw Hulu's Queer One with um, Kristen Stewart and Clea DeVall. Oh, she says she hasn't seen it yet. Oh, she hasn't. It looked good. Okay. Um, the Muppet Christmas Carol. That mm -hmm. uh, the George C. Scott version of A Christmas Carol. I love the Patrick Stewart Christmas Carol also. Um, you know, I they're 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 all good, but I just love Patrick Stewart. So if I had to pick a Christmas Carol, I would pick Scrooged. I really like Scrooge. I love Scrooge and the and the 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 ghost who like hits him on the head. I mean, I love that one. I oh, really Chris, do. The, they're the ones on Netflix with Kurt Russell as Santa. I have not seen those, but they will. Oh, I haven't seen them either. See, those are really good. Only focused on Hallmark, and we're not watching these Netflix productions. Right? You really <clears> should <throat> make an effort to watch it, because I've been wanting to see that Kurt Russell one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be that would be good. Um, Die Hard, Christmas movie or not? I mean, it's not in our Christmas collection at the library, that is for sure. <laughs> Just because something is set at Christmas time doesn't necessarily make it a Christmas movie. Uh, yeah, I watched Gremlin, that movie. Gremlins totally is also not in the Christmas section. Christmas movie. Um, you're wrong. So um, <laughs> This is not the first time I've had this argument with someone who works at the library. So. <laughs> Andrea said she saw the first one of the Christmas Chronicles and it was really fun. So, oh, and then Carol wants to know, did you watch Sir Patrick's sonnets on Instagram? I yes, I did. Every day he was reading us sonnets. Sonnets. I loved it. Oh, that's really nice. And Chris says that Die Hard is not a Christmas movie, and he's a yeah. guy. But here's the so. thing: you're welcome to watch Die Hard in your own Christmas movie night you know and i get that i might even do that myself also throw gremlins in there or whatever but when it comes to like promoting you know christmas um, movies, we do have the big christmas box. present how can you that not be a christmas movie and then um but we do have the binge box i can't remember what it's called but we do have a binge box that has Die Hard in it it's a christmas it's like a it's a it's a binge box that's about like christmas movies that are Gosh, I can't remember what it's called. We have several Christmas themed binge boxes and one of them has Die Hard in it. So that's our concession. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I I just enjoy Christmas in all its forms, I think is my problem. So, yeah. so what's your favorite non-Hallmark? My Hallmark favorite non-Hallmark. Yeah, like what's your favorite Christmas movie not, not of the Hallmark persuasion? <laughs> um, what's it called? White Christmas? With mm -hmm. Where yeah. the yes, yes. Yeah. 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 the show and the yeah. yeah. yeah actually, I can't believe I didn't say this. And that one is that I that is really fun and special. I can't believe I didn't say this though. Christmas Vacation is what we watch every Christmas Eve. National Lampoon Christmas Vacation. That's our Christmas Eve tradition. Um, and so I guess that also is up there too. But that is at this point has become so ritualized that it's just I don't. I, it's, it's hard to explain. <laughs> Christmas story. Um, that's you'll shoot your eye out. That yeah. that what it's called. Yeah. Again, all of these titles are so very vague. Um, yeah. It should just be called "You'll Shoot Your Eye Out" because that's how I remember it. 
Um, and Melanie recommends Feast of the Seven Fishes. I remember getting that at the library, but she says it's on Hoopla. So that's a way to watch it for free from home without even making a trip to the library. Yeah. Mary recommends Rare Exports is another fun one. Very weird. Um, and, yeah. I was going to say, in the Jewish one, uh, this year's Hanukkah Christmas movie, um, the girl didn't know that her mother was Jewish. So she's learning about Hanukkah, but mm -hmm. she grew up um, celebrating Christmas. And one of the things that she does in that movie is she's preparing the, the Feast of the Seven Fishes. Because okay. she's a chef. Well, you should watch <laughs> Feast of the Seven Fishes on Hoopla. Yes. And report back next year. Because we're not going to have another show until next year. <gasps> because we're not going to be here Christmas Day and New Year's Day. I know that that is probably yeah. disappointing for everybody. <laughs> like, I love you, Allison, but yeah, Christmas morning, I'm not going to, I'm not going to cop on here to talk to you. I, I'm going to really, I'm going to miss not having done this. It's not enough to say that, like I, like you said, it's not to say Christmas morning, this is where I will wish that I were, but I'm going to be sorry to not to not do this for so long. Yeah. So we'll be back, but and because of the way that the dates fall, we're not going to be back till like the 8th or something of January. Yeah, whatever that, that day is. Yeah. But yeah, because the first is mm -hmm. also. It's like as far out as it could be, basically, right. date wise. Yeah. Um, because probably not. I'm still going to be sleeping at 10 30 um, on the first, having stayed up until midnight because yeah. I'm old now and my body likes sleep. I know, I know. Um, that's another reason to have the TV, like the TV subscription thing, so that I can like watch the ball drop somewhere, watch someone <laughs> coverage of it, because that's been something that every year I've never had cable as an adult person paying my own bills. I've never had cable before. I've never done that. But this, that would mean every New Year's Eve, I never had a way to just watch those New Year's Eve the babble with the celebrities and you know I never got to do any of that so this year I, I'm gonna do it <laughs> it's 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 ridiculous and it's but I enjoy I'm it where if I can't do anything for New Year's Eve then I'm at least going to watch Carson Daly I don't who I don't even know who does this anymore Ryan I know he does one of them Ryan Seacrest does one of like Peter Cooper really really odd people sometimes. I, really, I would prefer to watch uh, Andy Cohen and Anderson Cooper, if at all possible, if they're doing <laughs> it, because um, that sounds the most fun to me, but. Right, it does, but. <laughs> um, I don't know, I guess we're wrapping up. I mean, do I you know. have any? If, if, it feels weird. sad. You know, it's weird. And it's weird to try to be covering Christmas and New Year's and then we're going to get back and it'll be January. And yeah, but that's what we got to do. So I guess so. Well, please leave in the comments. We'll come back and check if you have anything, any other movie recommendations for us or any, any topic thoughts you want to hear us babble about. Yeah. If you, if you want a topic. <laughs> If, if you have a topic that you would mention to someone you're passing in the hallway or waiting in a buffet line with somebody about and you don't get to do that stuff anymore, throw, throw it in the comments. Um, yeah, and, and we'll be back in the new year. Yep. Same as ever, right. I guess. <laughs> but this has been really fun in all seriousness. I'm really glad that we've been doing this and I'm really yes. grateful for all of you being here. Yes, we got really, you make it worthwhile. <laughs> Yeah, this is a bright spot in both of our weeks, I think. So, yes. Oh, we have a, uh, a question for what email? I think we said like leave it in the comments, but we don't. We don't really have like a latte's email. No, we don't. We should. I, well, maybe for the, maybe for the new year. <laughs> we don't have it now, so well. So right now, for now, it's the comments. But um, thanks, Chris. <laughs> Yeah, Merry Thank Christmas, you. Happy New Year, Happy Holidays to everybody. Thank Happy you again time. for hanging out with us every week. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the new year. Bye. Bye. <laughs>